uh, also thank you for doing our name correct because it's a uh, quite a long name united nations institute for training and research operational satellite application program uh, so in short we go by unosat um, we have been operational for since 2001 uh, one of the very first agencies to really use satellite image and geospatial uh, technology for uh, humanitarian uh, purposes and also development purposes. So um, what I wanted to do, um, uh, all of the colleagues uh, who are joining the call today um, definitely are from the, uh, from the GIS and remote sensing uh, kind of arena. And uh, without like, us giving a lot of like uh, information on what we do. Um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to show some examples that we are doing right now. And also maybe have a little bit more time to discuss amongst ourselves about the emerging technologies and uh, any other business. So we, we'd like to keep the presentation a bit short and uh, have more time for, for interaction, if, if that is okay with you. Um, so, uh, Jakarpong uh, is controlling the horizontal yeah, I'm space. Doing. All right. So, um, UNITA, we, we are, our agency is called United Nations Institute for Training and Research. So, UNITA is the principal training arm of the United Nations, and we provide a lot of capacity development solutions. It can be through training, high level workshops, and also different um, interventions. So um, UNOSAT is one of the divisions inside UNITA. Um, if we go to the next slide, Jakobon. Okay, so as I mentioned, we are a division inside UNITA and we go by operational satellite application program. Uh, so we started our journey in 2001, uh, very small, uh, kind of like a prototype um, in understanding how satellite imagery can be utilized for humanitarian response and other issues uh, where direct access is not possible. Um, right now, we are completely dedicated to satellite imagery analysis and technical work. And also over the years, we are trying to pass on this experience that we have from working all, all over the world through training programs. Um, currently, we, we have quite a spread of our office and centers. So our headquarters is in Geneva, uh, and uh, our headquarters is actually in, located in inside SARN, the Center for Nuclear Research in Geneva. Um, there is a, a strange reason, I'll, I'll tell you later, uh, if the, the question comes, why we are inside SARN. Uh, our headquarters is in SARN, and then we have this um, uh, regional liaison office that's in Bangkok, um, we have another regional liaison office that's in um, Nairobi and also one in the Secretary General's office in New York uh, with Global Pulse. Uh, and for projects, we have three offices in Pacific that you see three logos there uh, for in Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and Fiji. So six outposted centers and uh, one headquarters. So this is kind of like our spread and we are about 30 to 40 people, depending on the um, projects and depending on the initiatives, we grow and shrink a bit, but we maintain a mass of about 30, 35 people, um, uh, mostly technical people in our team. So um, I think very quickly I mentioned um, uh, two, two main pillars of our activity, uh, analysis, research and innovation. So this is where we we apply the geospatial technology, GIS, remote sensing. Uh, now we started using machine learning, AI. So we apply this in different cases and scenarios in real life uh, examples. Then as soon as we understand how to apply this technology in a good way, we try to transfer these skills to training programs and capacity development. Um, so if we go to the next one, Jacobong. So this is kind of our, I'll, I'll give you a very quick rundown of our, one of our flagship portfolio. That is what we call UNOSAT rapid mapping services. Um, so we kind of use geospatial technology, GIS, remote sensing uh, 
for the whole uh, disaster risk reduction cycle. Uh, so it starts from uh, preparedness and it's, it ends at uh, recovery. Uh, so this is something uh, we provide to the member state for free for emergencies. Uh, it's a 24 seven operational service and we work worldwide and any member states and sister UN agencies can gain these services from us uh, free of cost uh, throughout the year. Uh, so uh, we had a stat last year. So the last year we, we were activated 43 times for various, uh, uh, various kind of natural hazards all over the world. Um, and this year, uh, as you may know, apart from COVID, uh, there was a very devastating cyclone that passed uh, four countries in the Pacific, TC Herald. Um, uh, it started in Solomon Island, it passed Vanuatu, then crossed Fiji and ended up in Tonga. So this event didn't get a lot of limelight because it, the whole world is kind of paying a lot of attention in COVID. Uh, but our team is fully activated and we have been producing a lot of information from satellite imagery and we have a lot of examples that uh, Jack Rapong is going to show you uh, a little part of the session. Um, next one, please. So um, I think this is uh, this doesn't need a lot of explanation. We are all GIS remote sensing specialists. So we we do basic simple GIS operations. It's nothing fancy. Um, so we start with a pre-image, then we overlay with a post-image, and we do change detection. Um, and after change detection, we end up with uh, some exposure analysis that we can do. If we overlay um, the flooded extent or damage extent into baseline data sets, we are able to understand what kind of assets are exposed um, to, to a certain disaster. And that is kind of really vital information for uh, decision makers or like uh, responders in the field. Um, using these key numbers, a government can really target their interventions um, uh, spatially. So it's kind of spatial decision making we try to assist. Um, so the next, I think, is an example uh, from Cyclone, I guess, or Earthquake. Uh, Jakrapong, next one. Okay, so I think uh, it's, it's from TC Matthew um, in Caribbean. Um, so as you can see, uh, everybody knows this is, uh, we compare a pre and post VHI images and we are able to understand uh, the count of damage, uh, what kind of asset is damaged, is it residential building or is it critical facility? So all of this stuff can be assessed uh, just by comparing VHI images. So this is uh, another simple analysis that we do um, uh, after the disasters. So the, the key, key point here is like, we don't try to achieve 100% accuracy, but we try to be relevant, meaning within quick time of a disaster, within a few hours, we want to publish information that can be used for decision making. Uh, but as we realize, if we keep working on the accuracy, push for more and more accuracy uh, with traditional techniques, uh, we might end up wasting a lot of time. That time can be um, can be more utilized for uh, saving people in need, serving people in need. So this is kind of the the work that we do. But I'm um, I'll keep the discussion for the for the example Jakarpang is going to show. Um, so the next is uh, the capacity development, I guess. Yeah. So this is. What we try to do, whatever technology or technique that we, we figure out uh, in-house that works best for different situation, we try to transfer it to uh, training programs. So um, luckily, I, we got to get involved with ISPRS, I think a couple of years ago, uh, where we, um, I think we took uh, several sessions in the special exchange program uh, that happened in uh, Thailand. Uh, but we also provide training for government officers in different countries. We also conduct regional training. 
and we also do a lot of capacity development programs where we have our projects so uh, this is kind of uh, it from me um Chakrapong, the next one yes so um i can pause here for a bit if you have any question for me i'll take it then we can go to the example of uh, tc harold uh, and Jakarpang will be contacting that one. Thank you. Yep. Any questions for Khaled now? Okay, I, I don't think there are any questions. I think we can proceed. Okay, thank uh, you so much. Yes, uh, we can wait a bit. We can take the questions uh, towards the end also. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Jakarpang, over to you. Thank you, Khaled, and once again, hi everyone. So, I am Jakarbong. I am uh, the you know set rapid mapping team, and I see Khaled give a nice introduction to me. Here, the example that we did last two or three weeks for uh, dealing with a uh, tropical cyclone Harad by using satellite imagery. So let's go to. Uh, uh, if some information regarding about cyclone. This cyclone is uh, the first noted since the 1st of April and when it's located in Papua New Guinea. And after that, a few days, it quickly developed to uh, category five and going to hit uh, Vanuatu, Fiji and Tonga. As the map below you have seen, uh, the orange color and red color tone is mean increasing of the wind speed. So my work here mainly focus in Vanuatu uh, region. So after the 1st of April, uh, cyclone notice, next few days on 6th of April, a cyclone was make a landfall at Vanuatu. So but you can see the red area in this map. It means very, very strong wind. Wind speed is higher than 120 kilometers per hour. It is a severe uh, effect with this region. After that, in a few days, in 3 April and 6 April, UNICEF launched the first uh, report regarding about population exposure analysis in Vanuatu, it's mentioned that about half of population and building is affected with this uh, crisis. And all this report is now able to access with the link below in UNITAR website. Uh, not only in uh, national level, we also doing analysis in uh, district level or in each province level in different category of wind speed to see how many people and how many buildings affected uh, with this crisis. And we'll give this information to uh, our partner, who is another UN agency who work for humanitarian assistance. <coughs> this is another uh, work se sequence that we uh, did last three weeks. Uh, beginning from the 3 of April, uh, we activated to the international, international charter for Wanuatu on behalf of UN uh, OSHA. By activating, uh, by activating, we can have a chance to get very high resolution, high satellite uh, resolution to do another assessment. And the second line is regarding about the report that I mentioned earlier. After that, you know, so we launched a live map to display the result of damage assessment. And not only in Vanuatu, including Fiji, Tonga, Solomon Island. Yeah. And a few days, we already released, I mean, on the 8th of April, we released a preliminary satellite derived. Uh, damage assessment. This is after we got the image from activation. We do some like a quick uh, comparison between pre 
situation and post situation and give the idea to uh, our customer. So later I will show you one by one product that we developed. Not only Vanu do we also activate the charter for Fiji and Tonga on behalf of OSHA later. And from now until, I mean, I can say today, we still keep uh, monitoring assessment, developing a map and do analysis over this region. Uh, I just made a conference with my colleague from Genoa, who is another part of rapid mapping team of UNISAT. Uh, we will finish uh, for assessment for today, and tomorrow we will move to another activation. It's like a Somalia flooding something. Here is the example, the product that we develop for UN OSHA or another agency. Uh, even you can able to access from the link below uh, from this as a shutter org or unita website just do something quick uh, comparison between pre and post images and make a report to uh, who will run with this uh, COVID. and after that by doing damage assessment this is gonna spend about a week or a day to finish in the region. We compare and check every square meter of the supplementary and to find the damaged building and make it as a GS data. Of course, we produce a map to show the overview of data and all this kind of data we upload to the web, live web map, or, you know, that live web map already, which is available now, you can access to check it. And just yesterday we finished this uh, region. As you know, it's not easy to get a uh, very high solution imagery in the big area. So we need to spend time like a two or three weeks to, uh, to get the proper data to do analysis. Not only damage point we did, we also doing some damage density to give the idea like where is most affected and where is the, uh, we should increase the, our help. Here is another of a product that we developed for Vanuatu and island by island, earlier by earlier, and not Vanuatu and also Fiji. We also doing the same meteorology and also Tonga. Everything is already uploaded into the website that you, you already ex you are already able to access. Not the map, also the raw data regarding about the chef file and regarding about the analysis result is put there to download. So this is very brief work that we did for coping with the crisis. So please feel free if you have any question to me and call it. I think my work here, uh, we can give you more detail depending on your question, please.